Good afternoon. Welcome to the series security seminar at Purdue University. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Venkat, Venkata Krishnan. Uh, Dr. Venkata Krishnan is an assistant professor of computer science at University of Illinois at Chicago. He is co-founder and co-director of the Center for Research and Instruction in Technologies for Electronic Security at UIC. And his main research areas include web application security, browser security, mobile code security, and data tuning mechanism for addressing information flow confidentiality. He received his PhD degree from Stony Brook University in 2004, and he is a recipient of the Best Research Paper Award at ACSEC 2003 and the UIC College of Engineering Teaching Award in 2007. And uh, today, uh, Winkat will talk about how to defend against SQL injection. Thank you, Inkhui. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, SQL injection attacks. And uh, this is joint work with my uh, student, Prithvi Bisht, who is at UIC, and, and uh, Shruti Bandakavi, who is a student at UIUC, and uh, P. Madhusudan, who is a professor of computer science in UIUC. So let's let's start with a very simple example. You know what I'm what we are looking at is a phone book record manager, which allows users to edit their phone book entries. So this is the architecture of the whole setup. You know you have a web browser. The browser, you know, receives this page. And you know that page is provided to the browser by a web application server. The web application server, when it gets some user input from the browser, it sends it to the database in the form of a SQL query, and the result is sent back to the application server, which then formats the result in a web page, and it's sent back to the browser. So this is a simple you know, web application that will illustrate some of the ideas that we're going to talk about today. So consider the case where the user enters his name, John, and password open Sesame. The phone book application allows users to either display or delete their phone book entries. So if the user chooses display, the phone book entries are displayed provided the username and password are right. And if the user chooses delete, phone book, the phone book entry is deleted if, again, the username and password are right. So let's say the user cho chooses display. In this case, the SQL query that's generated by the web application server looks like this. It is select star from phone book where username is John and password is open sesame. And the result in this case is that John's phone book entries are displayed on the browser web page. Right? So let's look at, you know, this is the typical scenario of the use of this web application. Let's look at an attack scenario. Okay. The user inputs John followed by a single quote or one equals one followed by the two dashes. As you all know, the two dashes that represent the comment character in SQL language. And let's say you know the user he enters a password that says the password is not needed and chooses display. Right? In this case, let's see what happens. The query generated looks like this. Select star from phone book where username is John, or one equals one, followed by comment, and a whole bunch of things, okay, and password equals not needed. In this case, because the comment character appears here, the rest of the query is commented out, and the condition one equals one is always true, so the, all the phone book entries are displayed because one equals one is always true. So in this case, the attacker is able to access all the entries stored in the database by a simple attack. So SQL injection attacks are a major threat on the internet today. Um, these are the data recorded from the common vulnerability index. And in 2004, among all reported attacks, SQL injection contributed to 5.5%. And in 2006, if you look at the same data from CVE, you know, it's grown threefold to 14%. In fact, in 2007, thank you. 
2007 August, a report was released by Symantec where almost 63% of all vulnerabilities reported on the internet were either SQL injection or cross-site scripting. So SQL injection is a, is, a, is a very significant threat and last year in the card system security breach, about 263,000 customer credit card numbers were stolen and about 40 million were exposed. So this was you know, covered widely in the media. So this is a very important problem. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about you know, the following. We want to take a web application and we want to transform the web application and render it safe against all SQL injection attacks. And what I'm going to talk about is something extremely simple and I believe it has certain novel characteristics. But the technique itself is, is very simple and very intuitive. And uh, this appeared in you know, ACMC CCS 2007. So let's look at SQL injection again and you know, refer back to the example. So in the example, we saw that there was a lack of separation between you know, code and data. That is, you know, user input, you know, input coming from the user that's untrusted is influencing the query. In, 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 the, in the example, we had an R coming from the user which allowed the query to be changed, right? So SQL queries can be constructed in a program by arbitrary sequence of programming constructs. And these involve string operations like you know, concatenation, substring, and so on. And such constructs do involve untrusted user inputs. And normal cases, such inputs should be treated as mere data. You know, if a user supplies an R, that should go as you know, a user name with maybe R or a password with R. But in this case, it's influencing the query. It's influencing the way the query is structured. And so the queries intended by the programmer can be changed by untrusted user inputs. And this is the, the problem in SQL injection. So we want to dwell on this notion of change a bit before you know, we understand this problem further. So let's look at the par structure for a benign query. So the query looks like this. Select star from phone book where username is John and password is OpenSSM. So now this is the parse tree for the query. So there's a whole bunch of things on the left which parse select star from phone book which you know, are not very interesting. The most interesting you know, thing in this picture is the where clause where the where clause contains a condition term, you know, the keyword where followed by a condition term. And the condition in this case is an and condition you know, which has two subconditions, username equals John and password equals OpenSSM. Now, consider the parse tree structure for an attack query. First of all, the query actually has a where clause. In addition, it has a comment. The comment, the query has, you know, the left-hand side is the same. It has a where clause and it has a comment. So, and then this, you have a condition term, but the condition term contains an R. So what I'm trying to say here is that the query structure or the parse tree structure of a benign query is completely different from that of an attack query. So if you see here, you have an AND in the condition term, whereas an R in the condition term in the attack query. And you have a comment, you know, and you don't have a comment here. So if you have the token, you know, the parse structure of the two trees, you know, this is the programmer intended query, and this is benign query, and this is the attack query. So the parse trees are not isomorphic. So this is an observation that has been made in several works on SQL injection, you know. So we want to start from here. So the best defense against SQL injection are what are known as prepared statements. So prepared statements exactly address the problem of separating code from data. So in MySQL, you know, on the prompt, you can issue a query in the form of a prepared statement like this. So you can say, prepare statement name from select star from phone book, where username is you know, question mark and password equals question mark. Now, these question marks represent placeholders for input. So any user input will go in here, but it will never be used to parse the query. So the query is parsed even before user input is